We are willing to die rather than transgress the law of God because it, the law of God came from the ancestors. And so that young man and six of his brothers were tortured to death by the king in front of their mother. And why? Because here we find that they knew somehow that they would rise again and live again in God's grace. The fourth young man who died said this, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the God-given hope of being restored to life by Him. His choice was to die because he knew within himself that God would restore him to life in another world. We oftentimes think that our Jewish brothers and sisters have no idea of an afterlife. Not true. Here in the Hebrew Scriptures, we hear that seminal idea that when we die, we will rise again to life in God. And that seminal idea is carried forth by Jesus in the Gospel of Luke when the Sadducees ask Him a silly question. The silly question is all about marriage, and Jesus says to them, we marry and remarry here on this earth, but we don't do that in heaven. We don't do that where God is. So don't worry about that. Recognize instead that the God of Moses the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that God is a God of life. And Luke puts it this way, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. And if we are Christian and Catholic, then we are called to believe in the resurrection of Jesus. We are called to believe that there is life after death, that we are here on a temporary journey in order to achieve a life with God. That is our call. When we were baptized, we were baptized into the life and death of Christ. Amen? And if we were baptized into the death and life of Christ, then we believe in the resurrection. Amen? Being people who believe in the resurrection, we must know that what we do here is only temporary and leads us to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When I was a chaplain at the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, I would often go to visit the families of those who were in the hospital, those who were ill. And I noticed on a number of visits that people who were sitting in the waiting room, usually at this end of the corridor, would, when I walked down to visit various patients, lean out, kind of one at a time, to look down and see where I was going. The angel of death. If I entered into somebody's room, oh, my Lord, Mom must be a goner. No! I was bringing the healing presence of Jesus in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. 
We don't talk about extreme unction anymore. It is the anointing of the sick. Jesus sacramentally is present for those who are ill and for those who are dying. When I or any other priest walks into a room, we bring the whole community with us and we pray together for the person who is moving on from life into death, that moment between a life here and a life with God. That is our faith. That is our belief. We are resurrection Christians. Amen? Amen. Then we as resurrection Christians must recognize the importance of having the church with us when we are sick or dying. And the only way that we who are your priests can bring Christ to the rooms of those who are sick or dying is if you let us know. When someone is sick, when somebody is on the threshold of death, call us. We are your pastors. Let us know. It is good that you let us know after someone dies. Much better if you let us know before. That's what we're here for, to minister to you and to your families and to your loved ones. And if you are a friend who knows, call. Don't always think that people who are going through a sorrowful time will remember to make a call. But recognize that we as your pastors are here to serve you and to bring Christ to those who are sick and dying. We are believers in the resurrection. We are Catholic Christians. We believe with Jesus that the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob is a God of life. And if we believe that, then we are going to ask the Lord to be with us on our journey to the resurrection. This life that we love is only a temporary time. It is a life, however, that we love. Even though we are resurrection Christians. Most of us don't really want the resurrection to take place today or tomorrow. But if we are a people of faith, then we know that eventually the God of life and love will be with us, and we will surrender ourselves in life to the resurrection which is Jesus Christ. And in that resurrection, we will find a new life, a better life, a time of peace with God, where there will be neither marrying or any other sense, because we will always be looking to this God who is life and love for us.